right. I'd like to call the committee of the whole meeting for Monday, May 15th, 2023 to order. Roll call, please. Mayor Gafino. Here. <clears throat> Trustee Christensen. Here. Trustee Curtis. Here. Trustee Gatling. Here. Trustee Lowry. Here. Trustee Nedgevedge. Here. Trustee Salazar. Here. All right. Thank you. Audience comments. Trustee comments. All right. Under item one discussion, Steve. Thank you. Item number one, um, before I get into that real quick, uh, if you haven't noticed, Dave Hansen is our village planner is sitting in and, and kind of handling some of the zoning conversations tonight as Mike is out of town. Um, item number one is a unique uh, situation we had. We were approached by the uh, West Aurora School District 129. They've been looking for uh, basically a vocational type school set up where they're looking to do a mechanics program. They've been looking for quite a while and they they found a couple of locations in North Aurora and then eventually they honed in on this one. Um, so Dave's going to take us through uh, the presentation, but the key for tonight is that this is a concept review. So right now, this wouldn't even go back to the board right away. They're looking to start this program by end of summer. So in order to do that and close quickly, they wanted to get a feeling, you know, how the board would uh, do this because it's a change of zoning use. And essentially, we'll do a concept review tonight. Then it still goes to the plan commission. The plan com uh, commission still makes a recommendation, goes back to the village board. Uh, for discussion and then approval. Uh, so with that, I am going to give this to Dave Hansen. Thanks, Steve. So for the school district, as Steve uh, mentioned, the address that they're interested in is 202 to 208 Genesis Drive, which you guys might know is the former Merlin's place over there, right off of Orchard Gateway and Genesis Drive. Uh, it's a multi-use commercial strip center that includes an auto repair shop and then three separate office tennis spaces. The school district would like to utilize the entire building for vocational automotive training center on um, the northern portion would house auto repair shops where they accommodate lab activities and where vehicles would be used as demonstration and practice opportunities. Um, we just took a quick look at it. It looks like this type of use from a zoning perspective would be a educational facility vocational school, which is classified as a special use in the B2 district in the village. So ultimately, should you we brought it here tonight for concept review just to get uh, some feedback from the village board. Ultimately, they'd have to go through the planning commission process and then come back for board for approval or for another community of the whole um, sometime later this summer. Um, otherwise, um, parking wise, it looks like there's about 48 parking spaces on site. Our zoning ordinance only would require about 13, so it's definitely over parked at this point. Uh, the school district has mentioned that they would bus majority of the students here as well. So um, there's a school district rep, uh, Brent, over there. Um, if he wants to come up, he can just walk you through the program a little, just to provide you some more insight and answer any questions you may have. I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, by them occupying that strip mall, does it now take that mall off of our property tax roll? Correct. As well as now we're going to be losing potential sales um, sales tax revenue. Sure. So one way, uh, so as far as a revenue loss, uh, I looked at the property tax bill earlier tonight and it looked like the property tax bill was around $47,000 for, and that's the property tax. And of that, the school district gets about 29,000. So they obviously get the, the vast majority of that. So um, the village gets $2,400 according to the tax bill. Uh, the rest of the taxing districts get the remaining 16,000 a year in property taxes from that building. Um, as far as sales tax revenue, it's a, it was a Merlin and a, and a, and a salon before. And, uh, those are services as opposed to uh, retail. So if Merlin was selling you like windshield wipers, we might get the sales tax on that, but we weren't necessarily getting it on an oil change. So the actual loss of sales tax revenue is extremely minimal. So what is the benefit to the village? I mean, I think it's a great idea to have it localized within our village, you know, to help our school district. But I, I'm just worried about is that the best use for the property? Sure. Because they're not reimbursing us. Are they going to be buying the entire building or leasing so we it? Should, we should. You want to come up and kind of go through your yeah, program? Hi, Thank I'm you. Brent Raby. I'm the Assistant Superintendent for Teaching and Learning at West Aurora. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Dr. Craig. So he told me not to screw this up. So I'll do my best. Um, but uh, if you could advance the slide. So uh, three you, years ago, uh, we were. Sure. Could you speak in the. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. Into the mic a little. Yep. Thanks. There we go. Thank you. All right. Three years ago, uh, we decided to stop sending kids to the Fox Valley Career Center because 
Um, ultimately, the the trip out to Caneland was taking way too much time away from kids. Uh, and as you know, we opened up a, a vocational center right there where our district office is off of Downer Place. Uh, at that time, we we also approached Mooseheart because they had a vacant um, automotive lab on their campus, but they couldn't find an instructor. Uh, so we made a deal that we would find the instructor, they would uh, get that place up and running again. And just uh, because of how great our instructor is and how um, how talented our kids are, we have grown that program significantly where we do have two classes right now. Next year, they will be uh, dual credit opportunities for our students. And you can see we have an automotive one and an automotive two. Uh, so we originally, when we started, we only had about 25 kids in the class. We are at four full sections now of 75 minute periods. And we do send transportation from West High up to Mooseheart. Uh, if you've never seen the Mooseheart location, it only has one bay. So for us to have a working lift uh, where they actually can do live repairs and a lift for demonstration, it just doesn't really work. We have like 12 cars parked inside right now and the kids have to crawl around a little bit. It, it's just not an ideal location. Um, and we've just simply outgrown the space. So if you go to the next slide, you can see kind of what of our estimated schedule is. Now this schedule is based on uh, moving kids to Mooseheart. Um, and not this location. So the, the times may adjust a little bit, but you can see that we have a block one, the bus arrives, drops off kids at 750. The bus will then depart at 905. And that's just kind of how the day moves. Uh, some of our kids do drive to the site, depending if they're gonna work on their cars or not. But for the most part, we have discouraged it and it just, nobody wants to lose their parking spot at West High. So they typically leave their cars there. Um, the only difference to that on Mondays, uh, you would see a little bit different schedule because of our late start schedule, but for the most part, uh, the schedule would be really close to this. If you go to the next slide, um, automotive experience, just so you, it is not a live working auto shop where we are not going to be doing business where we're working on uh, community members' cars or things like that. Basically, we work on district or staff vehicles. Uh, they work on their personal vehicles or they work on donated cars. Um, we try to keep all of the cars within the shop. Obviously, that's a safety uh, concern. So, we, you know, anything that's donated would stay in the shop. Uh, the students earn certifications such as tire balancing. Our, our autos teacher actually is out right now getting another certification. So when students leave that they are employable, there is a dual credit opportunity with both Bonzi. And then the other thing that we are really excited about that location, if you go across the Orchard, there are a ton of um, car dealerships that are looking for technicians. And so I think that that's a really good opportunity for us to have that partnership where kids can cross the street and they can, and they can earn uh, opportunities to do internships and future employment. Next slide. Uh, so if you, if you know that location, there is the Merlins, which, which does have quite a few lifts in there that we would use. Uh, what we're really thinking about, we took a tour out to Wabanzi Community College and uh, instead of having to always have to work on real cars, we've actually thought about a module component to it where you can have an engine where it can be a station. You can have where they change brakes. You don't always have to be have the full car to do some of these things. So we took some pictures from Obanzi about how they have their setup. And this would pretty much look like our Autos 1 program. And then Autos 2, they could get to the actual full car and doing more repairs. Uh, so that would be some of our expansion into the other, um, the other buildings that are there. Uh, on the left-hand side, I just kind of gave you an overview of our CT offerings. We're really proud of our CT offerings. Uh, we've expanded that area significantly over the last few years, and our kids have really responded. All of our CTE programs pretty much run at full sections or four full sections. Uh, and we've also had conversations with partner schools. I know East Aurora currently has an autos program that, uh, you know, they, they may be looking to, they, they've mentioned that, hey, if you guys could get up and running, we'd really like to send some kids. And we've had some initial conversations with Bitavia, who is still sending kids out to uh, Canelan and the Fox Valley Career Center. And again, the, those students are losing significant instructional time because it, for a trip out there, it's basically three to four periods. Um, and obviously, we'd like to continue our, our partnership with Mooseheart and allow uh, Mooseheart students to still attend 
attend the program. So right now they're anywhere between like six and eight students on any given year. Uh, we have talked about uh, future CTE programming, especially in heating and air conditioning and fire science. Uh, those needs kind of change as uh, community needs grow and community needs change. So uh, at first, we'd really like to just solidify the autos program there and make sure that uh, that is uh, a really sustainable program for us and then talk about how we use the rest of the space for any future CTE programming. Uh, and then the last slide is really just an overview of you can kind of see the red area would be for auto automotive, the green area would be future expansion, the first expansion would be more of that modules uh, automotive program, and then the blue obviously designates parking for students and staff. Our main goal is to make sure the space stays really nice for North Aurora. We you know obviously we don't want junker cars all over the place. Our autos teacher understands that and uh, we, he has a plan about how we'd fit everything in that location because it is significantly bigger because of the bays. It's just an easier workspace for us if we do end up in this area. So that's all I got. All right, thank you. I have a, a couple questions. So how long is the class? Is it one semester for auto one and another semester for auto two? They're year long classes. So they stay auto one for the year and auto two for so the year. It's a full two. year. Yeah. Okay. So what do they learn? Um, they learn everything. They uh, In autos one, it's really kind of the basic maintenance of a car. Uh, one of the things that our autos uh, teacher really believes in is that not everyone gets to work on a car on a lift. So he really believes that the first step is learning how to maintain your own personal car. How do you change the oil? How do you how do you change the brakes? Things that you can do off the ground. And then the second part of that or the, the, the autos two program is more intensive about, hey, if you're gonna really do this for a career, this is how you start diagnosing problems. This is how you really start troubleshooting where you're not just replacing parts that you're actually fixing a car. And uh, he, he has like, 20 years as a mechanic. And so um, he's really kind of developed that out. We've talked about modifying the curriculum, especially if we get a, a, a location that allows us to have a little bit more expansion about redoing that and having some other um, opportunities for students. Well, there is a need for mechanics. Absolutely. And so I think it's good. Yeah. And, and small engines too. That's another thing that we've talked about is just that whole engine repair concept is, is a really, uh, hard market to find people that can do it right now is the uh, school looking to buy the building or rent the building or how what are you looking to do we'd purchase the building okay all right and then one other quick question um for our staff has there been any interest in that building recently by any other tenants not that we're aware of and, and like i said before i i get that would be the if there was any concern it would be the loss of property tax revenue or sales tax revenue um, that traditionally has been, I think there's a, there was also a mortgage broker there too. So it's traditionally been a service-based um, place. Um, so that hasn't really generated the sales tax revenue. I know that that building has had multiple tenants come in and out in the past few years as well. So, I mean, as of right now, I don't know if there's actually one active tenant in that building. Okay. Kind of out of the way anyways. Yeah, I think that's the problem. It's kind of layered back. And I think Carrox is number four Merlin's and same issue. Then Ann K hair place was over there same way. It wasn't really out in front. And, you know where it was. And they were a service business also, like you said. So, I mean. Steve, how long has it been empty at this point? You know, I don't think the Merlin's closed that long ago. Maybe. Oh. I, I Honestly, I, I wouldn't want to wager a guess, but I think it's been a few months ago. So, I guess I did. Oh, okay. To me, it seems like it's been empty for a very long time. But I don't know what the, the turnover when it switched to Merlin's. I don't remember off the top of my head how long there was the gap there as well. Because there was time in between the the previous automotive use as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I, I would just like to point out while I'm glad that District 129 is finally investing some money in North Aurora, school wise, high school wise. I mean, there's always been the big issue of we don't have a high school. We really aren't serving our population. And now you're coming in and saying, well, and this may also be used by Batavia School District, East Aurora School District. So again, what, what benefit are we getting as the village of North Aurora when we can't really get anything that's that's dedicated to our students in the village? And now we finally get something that we're sharing with the surrounding communities. So what would, what exactly would that partnership look like? Would they be reimbursing you? How How would that work? Yeah. So let me clarify the statements around there is that uh, so on one of the slides, we can house about 160 students in our in our automotive program. 
if we moved into a location like this, um, we would not be opening seats to any other school districts until all of our students were served. Once our students were served, if there were open seats on a year to year basis, we would sell those seats to, to other districts so we could fill up the classes. But obviously uh, the North Aurora and the Aurora students and the Montgomery students would be first on our list. Uh, for instance, our welding program opened with the similar concept. And as of right now, it is just full of West Aurora and we have waiting lists to get in. And uh, we're looking at all additional opportunities there too with the, the Wisner Center to, to try to expand to make sure and we are not opening up seats anywhere else the same thing with our cna program so it is a, a west aurora first program and then obviously if we have opportunities that we would expand and maybe that's within the first couple of years but as of right now I, uh we're at capacity with just west aurora students uh, i think it's a good fit uh that air that particular building is in an area kind of set back and it's not very visible anyway for retail and uh, I think this is an excellent use of that building. So I'd be in, in favor of uh, promoting it. I, I agree with Mike. I'm all for it. I think it's a great use. And um, I, I I don't think it's desirable for most retail business. And like I said, to me, whenever I don't go by there that often, it's been empty forever. And the taxes that were being generated were mostly going to the school district anyway. So I don't see that as a loss. So I'm, I'm in favor. I agree. Yep, I too. I mean, we do need uh, skilled uh, mechanics, you know, and uh, it makes sense, you know, across from the Autumn Mall and, um, you know, it's kind of an area that doesn't do so well there. So it'd be good to have 40 to 160 students there and maybe they'll go to Dunkin' Donuts and they'll go do it. Oh, our other students other like to eat, trust me. <laughs> right. So, I mean, that'll be, there is some, you know, victory there and you now it's good to work with school districts. They'll go to well, Starbucks so. and Target for sure. Yeah. You know that. So as a reminder, as a reminder, if this moves forward, it would go to the plan commission. When they mm -hmm. make a recommendation, they also, as a special use, can add conditions too. Um, like a bank. We're not concerned at this point about parking or anything like that or, or junk vehicles being left out because based on the number of vehicles and how they're setting up, but things like that can always be added as a condition later. But they'll be riding a bus basically. Yes. And then they'll bring their own cars if it's mm -hmm. something they choose to work on. Yes. yes. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, item two, Steve. Uh, thank you. Item number two is uh, regarding public works restructuring. And uh, the, we, the reason it's going to the board is um, we have a history of when we have vacant positions that are not gonna be filled, we deauthorize them. And then when we fill new ones, uh, we reauthorize ones that are on the books. And in this case, we have a little bit of, we have a little bit of that. We have deauthorizing, reauthorizing and, and um, re restructuring one position. So Brian's going to take us through. This is uh, basically Brian's fault for being promoted to public works director. So now we're just trying to restructure to fill that uh, vacancy. Okay. Thank you, Steve. So with my promotion uh, to public works director it has left the superintendent job vacant. Um, so we've kind of had some discussions in house of how to, to fill it. Um, we feel promoting within is good. It's, we have a lot of, uh, crew leader, crew members, um, few that were just made crew leader. However, they're not necessarily ready to become a superintendent yet. Um, so we've discussed some options of how to fill that or what we should do for the, for the future moving forward. Um, so Myself, Jason, and Steve sat down and we came up with uh, um, some restructuring of the public works department. Um, so we kind of developed this to retain employees and then develop a success succession planning moving forward. So that's kind of what, what we're going to do. Um, so I can kind of lay out a little bit um, of the plan and I'll let you kind of. Um, so public works has three divisions, waters streets and engineering. Um, they're all led by the public works director. And as of June 1st, the department will have a total of 20 full-time employees. Um, so the water and streets are currently led by superintendents. And then the engineering is led by the village engineer. Um, currently in the water department, uh, it has a, a superintendent, um, one lead water operator. And then after a, the addition, we'll have four laborers. 
in the street department, there are two crew leaders and seven laborers. Um, two of the laborers now currently, uh, one is very focused on fleet maintenance and the other does our performs our Julie locating. So those are kind of two specialized um, people that do, do work for us. And then also there's uh, the custodian answers to the superintendent currently. And then the engineer uh, oversees the civil engineer. So um, with me leaving and uh, that leaves the superintendent job open. So um, we kind of sat down and filled up two or three pieces of paper trying to figure out what's the best way to, to move forward. Um, so currently we feel that um, the restructuring is needed or is at least to be looked into. So what we would end up doing is um, for now leave the street superintendent vacant. Um, we would look into uh, reauthorizing the foreman, which has always been on the books, but it hasn't been filled. Um, and what we would probably fill that internally with one of the crew leaders that we had just hired for crew leaders. The Then we would do, um, we would have to hire another laborer to fill the vacant street department spot. Um, also in the restructuring, we, we talked about um, adding a um, assistant public works director, which would um, also be the village engineer. Um, they would take on the role of overseeing the civil engineer, the fleet and building maintenance. Um, then the foreman would oversee the two crew leaders in the street department. Um, the water department would stay the same because it's kind of fallen into the right order of how it, it should go from superintendent to foremen, uh, to laborers. Um, also the assistant public works director slash village engineer, water superintendent would still report to the public works director. Um, restructuring would provide an opportunity to continue the succession planning, um, provide a financial cost benefit to the village, provide a additional supervision internally as the department grows, and then, um, we really don't have any concerns about the workload that it would add. And then in the end, when we kind of, it all comes down to the budget, um, the village would benefit right around $74,620 and the total headcount of the department would remain unchanged. So it would actually save us some money by by restructuring. And then in the future, if, if we need to, um, restructure a different way, it still allows for, you know, the foreman could go away or, or then go back up to the superintendent. Um, the village engineer could, I mean, it could all kind of play together, but that would just get us back on um, succession planning of use, utilizing the, the staff that we have now, which um, my my guys and everything, they're, they're a bunch of really good guys. Um, so it, I just think it's a good way to utilize what we currently have as employees. If I can jump in real quick, I'd say before John left um, and and Brian was hired, we sat down several times, Jason was involved in a lot of those conversations and talking about restructuring in a way, there was really two options that came down to, and that's hiring a superintendent from the outside um, or taking some of the talent that we have internally. And we have a village engineer who is an extremely talented person who also is very interested in public works operations. And so by restructuring, what we decided was um, you're basically giving the village engineer an assistant public works title and a slight bump. He goes from uh, the superintendent pay range to the next range, which is deputy chief. So there's a, there's a little bit of a bump in salary there, hopefully keeps him here for a long time potentially, you know, as, a, as someone who can move up further in the future. And then what it does too, is we already had the foreman position on the books for years. We just didn't fill it by putting a foreman. You're basically taking someone who's in the field, mostly giving them a chance to actually be in the office for 50, 60% of the time, still be, they still plow. They still have after, after hours operations, but it gives the people in the streets division, some more upward mobility. And the foreman would still respond directly to uh, Brian. And Brian started at one point, he was a foreman and he was the last foreman we had and I got promoted to the street superintendent. And water stays the exact same. 
And in this, the where the money savings is, is by the superintendent position being um, at a higher tier. Basically, you're replacing that with a, a laborer and the drop in salary is enough that even with the promotion of the assistant public works director, there's still a, a pretty good savings in the upcoming budget year. Um, that's not the true cost. That's the cost of what would be coming out of the budget because we expected to hire somebody at a higher rate. But there's still a savings. I mean, out the top of my head, it's got to be around forty or fifty thousand in true savings. Um, if you were to hire somebody even at a higher step and bring them in from outside the organization, so we feel this is a great opportunity. And Brian hit it on the head. We have some really good people in public works. They're starting to build a core nucleus there, and that's great because we have a lot of young people there. And if you can build around them, then you have succession for the future. I think it's great. Yeah, I agree. I know I know firsthand they have a great staff. So this is awesome. I think it's a great opportunity to keep keep these guys around. So I I I love it. So good job. Yeah, it's awesome. Sounds good. I think oh go ahead. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. I think this, the succession is important. Well, the morale moving who, you know, not everybody wants to be superintendent, but it certainly gives them hope that, hey, if I'm a new guy you know, work hard, you know, uh, learn, you know, move up, but also succession where we're able to keep people in house as we did with the police department as well, whatever, who, you know, who, who better than our own employees to promote. So yeah, I think it's great. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. It gives people something to aspire to. And if they come up through the ranks, then they, they know every position coming up and, and then they're the best really qualified for the job. So that's great. Plus, we know we already have them, meaning they're they're people that we already know will be right. really good in those positions one day. And you know their history and yeah. their work, you know. And I, I know this is kind of cheesy, but I'll say it. I, I also appreciate the ability to discuss these things with the board and the support that we've had over the years because you know, a lot of times things get stagnant and you 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 look at these jobs and they don't really change at all. And one of the things that we've been doing this year in the budget, and and hopefully it'll settle down because it was kind of a crazy year for restructuring. But it's okay, you know, to restructure. And I'm glad that the board has been supportive of that because government's usually slow to adapt and we're trying to actually get ahead of it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> so we'll have a motion to adjourn to go to exec session for collective bargaining. So move. All in favor, say aye. 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 Close the same sign. All right. Thank you.